take this opportunity and we will welcome everybody into the studio here on the Independent Investor Channel for our weekly Hylion update. Very, very important that we continue to supplement uh, the information pool that is out there uh, as we are probably in about um, the darkest phase uh, in the company's evolution here, um, being stuck in this quandary of uh, very tough markets, uh, supply chain issues, uh, and then a, a looming 2023 um, that stands to be very promising for the company. So it is incumbent upon all investors to um, certainly, if that fancies your uh, your your approach to continually monitoring this company um, and and keeping up on the day to day action, um, I bid you all the best in doing that. But I think there is one way and one way only to uh, approach uh, an opportunity like this. Ask yourself what's going on in the industry. Um, what is the big shift that is happening, if, if there is one. Mm -hmm. Uh, what are we looking to address? What are the current solutions out there? And what is the current demand over those products uh, in, in the industry? So for you guys that don't know, and I continually offer this week in, week out, and I know that there's probably at least a few patrons who will seek out this information to understand a little bit more about Hylion Holdings and what they bring to the table. Um, this company is going on uh, eight years old. Thomas Healy is uh, the head CEO, and um, um, he is the creator of, of Hylion, this idea uh, of a, a more efficient class eight uh, space, which is your large semi trucks over the road trucking. Uh, and he did so with an idea that uh, you could uh, extend the range using alternative fuels uh, with the idea that we could potentially add more horsepower to the experience. Um, we could uh, address the uh, over reliance currently. Uh, by the diesel, um, diesel fuel that dominates the industry. Um, this is the very fuel that, that powers the space. So when, when you're looking at the initiative here, there are a lot of fronts that are going on that affect this highly on opportunity right now. Now for the company and the industry as a whole, uh, it is uh, probably going to move into the ice age here uh, over the winter. I, I don't see outside of the prospects of winter validation that there's going to be a whole lot of catalyst uh, over the coming months. So what does that mean for individual investors? Well, it means that the age old onus of patience is going to be the very pedigree that's going to see us through. Uh, and it uh, perhaps may seem cliche uh, for me to offer that as, um, as advice, but for you guys that tune in to me week in and week out, know that I am a bullish share owner of the company. Um, I think this company has the right vision for the future to at least be able to, uh, in some small degree or large degree, penetrate the class eight market, both here domestically and abroad. Now, I think there is enough interest in the receipt of that product, but I also think we are in the early innings, my friends. I think that there is so much that needs to be done on this front. And the question is, where are these few companies that are offering the solutions along in their technology? And I, I think where some will boast and suggest that one company is ahead of the other uh, in, in the evolution, perhaps maybe there's some bias in that. I don't know. I would contend that Hylion is um, far and away uh, ahead of the game, even with their self-induced delays um, based on the reasons that they've explained has really set them back in their evolution as a company um, with regard to supply chain issues. And some of the CEOs that I'm speaking with as well um, discuss the labor shortages as being a real hit to the bottom line. Uh, all I can tell is that Hylion is doing a great job in building their team uh, and have done so since coming to public markets. Nobody talks about it. Uh, me and my small team, uh, with the compliments of David, we, we track that um, intimately. Uh, and I think it speaks to the internal growth that the company is, is going after. Now, these are not hourly laborers. These are highly skilled, 
highly, highly technical positions that Hylion is looking to uh, bring in house here. And um, I, I think it's important that they continue to do that. And they are, it's one of the grades that I put over on highly on uh, that uh, they get an A plus on with regard to their growth and with regard to their hiring and the team that they've brought on board here from the upper management uh, to the board of directors all the way down to their highly technical team that they're looking to bring uh, bring on here and leverage that opportunity. Um, but um, in, in a nutshell, Hylion is looking to electrify the class eight space. And if you want to find out more information, I would invite you to visit Hylion.com. I always try to leave that in the comments below uh, for you guys to kick over and get a non uh, biased opinion. I try to deliver as neutral of an opinion from week to week as I possibly can, uh, but also to make sure that we're providing that direct conduit to information that is out there. And it is, it's lean, my friends. Um, I am one of them and I'm a lowly shareholder. I don't have a lot of glitz and glamour on my show. If you want to come on um, and you want to experience a, a clip edit type of an exercise, uh, I'm the wrong channel for you. Uh, I don't even put background music on, okay? Because the words that I deliver from week to week are unique to me. Uh, and these are the words that absolutely are heartfelt. They are absolutely aimed at having my thumb on the pulse of where this company currently is, where it has been, and where it is potentially going into the future. And I think you can vow you can benefit from it. Where 10, 15 years ago, we would have never had the opportunity to share information uh, and or even fall on our face when we hear a tweet uh, heard around the world um, and are able to react in a, in a few seconds um, to that said information, I just think speaks to the times and requires individual investors to really manufacture the level of patience necessary. Because if we're inundated by all this constant information on a specific company or uh, the information that is uh, available abroad, even with the geopolitical conflict, and we react upon that information. I don't think we're giving ourselves that ample time to interpret the information um, as declared. <clears throat> we'll speak about the announcements, of course, in this video. Take a moment to acknowledge uh, September 11th as well. Uh, I am here in New York City. And yes, indeed, it's got a special place in my heart. Absolutely. So um, I kind of look at this as um, a little bit of a, it's a solemn day. I won't be doing a whole lot today. I've been down to the memorial many, many times. Uh, I would invite you if you ever have the opportunity to, to kick down there. Um, it is quite the experience. And uh, that is all I will say about that in remembrance of 9-11. I thought it was fair to acknowledge that today uh, for, for the highly on video. The second source of information that I want to uh, offer to you guys is the Discord group. Um, there's still a ton of patrons who hit me up and ask me for the link uh, to the Discord group. I'm going to try to put that in the pinned comments of this video. So at least you're provided. All this is free of charge, guys. This is not... Um, uh, paid private groups here, okay? This isn't uh, a, an opportunity to solicit for your business, okay? Um, unlike the landscape out there where, quite frankly, I'm inundated every single day and I get it, um, you got to ignore most of that stuff. Um, make no mistake, our intention here on the Independent Investor Channel and the few of the sources that I recommend, Hylion.com and the Hylion Discord group. Now, there's a few other places of information, highly on bullish shareholders. Uh, I am also part of that group and endorse it. Um, the, the, the same uh, figureheads that are um, in those Facebook groups also frequent the, um, the Discord group. And I would invite you to kick over there. I'll try to share that, uh, uh, that link to the Discord group if you like uh, much more frequent content uh, than what I can deliver on uh, you know, once or sometimes twice a week uh, on my weekly highly on videos. But it is absolutely imperative that people educate themselves up on many, many different fronts that I speak about. And it is multifaceted. It is 
absolutely a dynamic space to look at. And it is not as easy, my friends, as buying a stock at $3.30 and expecting it to shoot to the moon overnight. Um, if you misconstrue my uh, expectations of this company, you would be wrong. Um, if you misconstrue um, my Twitter um, rant to Hylion.com, um, then you need to ask me about it and I will provide you clarity. Okay. And this is kind of what this opportunity means every week for myself and uh, the many shareholders that I think are part of this opportunity here that will, in fact, if they deliver the um, really the silver bullet in this opportunity, and that is time and patience. Uh, it says it on the Highly on website. If you need to find it, you can go on there. Uh, it, it, it's, it's an opportunity that Hylion speaks about as if they have a solution to offer right now to the marketplace, uh, and they do. Um, they offer their hybrid EX product right now to the marketplace, and the Hypertruck ERX is still in more of the development and proof of concept phase uh, insofar as they've earmarked winter testing and fleet uh, validations uh, within each of the fleets. We had a test uh, fleet kind of operation this week that was released through Twitter and it, um, it set me on tilt, absolutely. Um, this company has come to market and it, like all the other EVs, has, has not been perfect. Um, it has been far from perfect. And there's a lot of things going on right now in the early stages of development in each of these respective companies that would, that would require them not to be forthcoming with so much information as the technology develops, as new discoveries are made. Remember, these guys are dumping some massive, massive amount into the R&D spending from quarter over quarter, okay? Investments in R&D pay off, okay? For, for you guys that have studied companies and you've understood why they take those risks to just put into research and development, it's because they've been proven to pay off. They have to do it. It's a, a cost of doing business and highly on is highly engaged right now in that. And through that payment to the research and development budget or early aspect of their budget, budget in getting their flagship products uh, out to the market. They don't want to lose any of that proprietary progress that they're making on each of those respective companies. So if you're wondering why from week to week, I badger the company on being more transparent, I believe that the information that they do release, they can be much more careful on, okay? I believe, and I have an instinct that this company is going to do great things into the future, okay? And this is part of why people tune into me. This is where the goods are, okay? Everybody can kind of do away with the fluff and car fluffel. They want to know my opinion about where this company is going. Uh, I have an instinct about where this company could potentially go, and it's not going to take a whole lot to get there with the framework of what they're trying to do and being able to check the boxes in a lot of different categories for fleets I think the sky is the limit for this company. I really do. <clears throat> but when projections are made by the company to suggest that the Hypertruck ERX can get a range of 1,000, it's been said many, many, many times. And we'll get into the announcements here, okay? Um, there was a tweet that came through this week that suggested that there was a driver and it was complemented with a video. It's the same driver uh, that has been driving for Hylion since the very, very beginning. So I would expect that that's a pretty good test subject and that he's been a, um, a driver for many, many years. He's an experienced driver uh, from what I can glean from uh, his assistance in helping Hylion with a lot of the driving duties. Seems like a great guy. Um, he's been in a lot of videos, um, seems like kind of a private guy, uh, but uh, nonetheless, he provides a, a very vital service to Hylion in that he chews up a lot of the road miles um, that, that Hylion is really kind of uh, in that opportunity now to engage in. And so he's, um, he's an important part of that. But the tweet came out and um, 
it, it was a test route, uh, I believe, from Detroit uh, to somewhere down in the mid Midwest somewhere, and he was able to make it 780 miles. Uh, and that when that tweet came through, everybody quickly jumped on that and started to compare the thousand miles of total overall range uh, to the 700 that was declared. Now, I think although the, the scrutiny was warranted because the information that was re released by Hylion could have been done with a lot more care, I, I think it should have been supplemented with a business wire uh, with some of the statistics as to the starting amount of fuel verifying and doubling down that, yes, indeed, it was full um, on the onset and how much potentially there was in fuel that was left over. Because what that ends up doing is that it allows investors to speculate on whether or not Hylion really knows what their numbers are. And to add on to the tweet, what came through is the fact that it was just the Hylion Hypertruck ERX with no payload. Okay. And that sent investors in somewhat of a tailspin in trying to understand the disconnect between the over 1,000 miles of range and the 780 that was declared uh, during the tweet and also doubled down uh, by the driver during the experience. And then we take a step back. And since then, I've actually had a few people, compliments uh, of the Discord group, uh, Andreas uh, being one of them. So shout out to Andreas as well. Uh, and Silent Alert as well, who's one of those other uh, Twitter uh, uh, people, personalities that I follow. Um, those two guys, Andreas is um, one of the main individuals and points in the Discord group, but uh, I actually follow him on Twitter, does a fantastic job as well as Silent Alert. I, I hold these guys in very, very elite uh, company uh, because what they say is fabulous. Um, they do not have to reciprocate that to me because um, I'm a little bit more edgy. As a matter of fact, I'm a hell of a lot more edgy. Um, I, I don't like the uh, disparity between a, a continual doubling down over the last couple of years of a thousand mile range. And then all of a sudden we drop a tweet during the ice age when information has to be anticipated by Hylion to fall on very, very hungry ears. And if that information is contrary to what the expectation for the unit is going forward, then there just needs to be some explanation for it. And I actually believe that there is. And why that wasn't provided on the onset uh, is, is, is just a miscalculation on behalf of Hylion. And I will chalk it up as just that. Do I believe that Hylion uh, meant ill will to investors by putting out that tweet? Not in the least, not in the least. Hylion's intention is to push out information when they have it and when they are comfortable in doing so. That is it. Bottom line, okay? The idea of pushing out this range is that they did do this test run, and there is a lot of things to be gleaned from it. Unfortunately, there's a lot to be questioned by it, okay? And since then, we've had a lot of amplifying information to suggest that even a, a tractor trailer, and this is by compliments of our Class 8 uh, truck driving community, which is something that I also advocate for. Their contributions to this initiative are second to none, my friends. I am not a truck driver, but I do absolutely yield to the many truck drivers who are part of this community. And it is one that I acknowledge in providing some incredible insight to the day-to-day -day goings on of what it's like to be a truck driver, what it means, what the experience means, what this could potentially mean in the direction that Hylion is going and what was able to be garnered by the trucking community in providing a little bit more color around the 780 number is to suggest that a, a, a tractor as it goes down the road does not get to enjoy all of the complements of the regenerative braking, okay? When I read this, and this was not my idea, this was one that I picked up on Twitter, I believe, and I do not remember to provide credit to that individual, but I'm certain that they watch my highly on videos because I've seen them before and they're a, a staunch proponent of offering information to help further the dialogue. And it really helped me understand that Perhaps maybe the tractor going that 780 was a little bit more impressive than we give credit for. And that's because 
as it's working along that constant speed, it does not have the opportunity to engage that regenerative braking the way that it would hauling a payload. Uh, and I thought that that was a nice piece of insight in really understanding the 780 that was declared by Hylion. Uh, second point that I want to kind of make here is that on Hylion's website, they speak about uh, being able to produce results that are on par with diesel. Um, and, and I would agree with that. I would also suggest, my friends, and make a statement that this is my own opinion. This is not fact-based at all. But I will make the statement now in allowing you guys to consider the prospects of range being one of those things that aren't quite as important as some of the other aspects that we talk about on the channel, okay? Refueling time, downtime, okay? Um, we've seen one opportunity through the, uh, uh, through the channel uh, of how long it takes to actually refuel the, the, the CNG uh, hybrid unit. We have not seen the refueling of the Hypertruck ERX as of yet, but I would presume that that refueling is on par with what it would take eight to 10 minutes or so on a normal refueling on par with diesel. That, my friends, is enormous, okay? Because when you're looking at downtime upwards of a half hour to 45 minutes to charge our traditional BEV vehicles, okay? which was doubled down on by our NFI rep. I believe it was the CEO that was captured by uh, Helion, the YouTube channel, uh, this week by talking about um, the uh, expected um, uh, market that they were going to focus in on for the BEV portion of the NFI business, uh, and that being upwards of 200 miles and below. That's it, guys. That's it. And this is actually on par with what Thomas Healy talks about. And it gets my attention because a lot of people throw out there that the Tesla gets 500 miles uh, fully, fully loaded. That might be true. It might not. I have not seen enough to validate with my eyes or enough in way of articles to read that that has absolutely been proof of concept down and put into the rigor of over the road and proven to be true. Okay, I, I, I'm just gonna sit there and say, I think there's a lot of claims being made right now to, to garner some attention on each of these respective businesses. And until it becomes true in the over the road rigor, um, I, I would question the integrity of those, of those comments until I see it. Uh, in reality, because here's the thing, even at 500, there was a kind of a funny tweet that came out this week that suggested, if you're a truck driver, are you going to drive all the way to 480 and then start looking for your charge when you run the risk of maybe having that charge run to zero and end up on the side of the road? Of course not. All right. So when we're talking about recharging times and we're talking about such an anemic range when compared to, let's say, an ERX that as of now, we know can burn rubber up to 780. Now that's without payload. And I'm going to talk about that in just a second. But my friends, dare I suggest that perhaps maybe that's kind of a loot point in all of this. And as I started to go through and, and kind of crunch the numbers a little bit on the 780 and what it could potentially mean, it meant a lot for me because that was the longest range that had been recorded on the Hypertruck ERX, my friends. Nobody said anything about it because Hylion allowed for the snowball to kind of take effect on Twitter. And even guys like myself jumped right on it and was like, what, what the hell are you guys doing? How is it that you release this information without providing any type of color around this test? You thought it good enough to record the video and put it online. How is it that you can't even provide some, I would have liked to known what the, what the, what the climate was doing. I would have liked to have known, you know, I, I assumed that the driver tendency was such of an experienced driver, but they never said that, right? They never said that why they ended up to opt for stopping the test at 780. If they would have doubled down and said, look, we have another, you know, uh, 480 miles, I think it was to Dallas, Texas, or Texarkana, Arkansas, I can't remember where exactly it was. But the next availability for CNG to to refuel was some many miles down the road. 
and it would have taken you know 1300 miles to actually make that to the next station so they opted for that why not just offer that as 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 color and that's where the scrutiny from me comes in is that this company is going through an evolution of of, of learnings and they have to understand when information that's released is well received by the market carno generator for example well received by investors horribly received by the stock market the stock market the stock sold off for nine days straight since that announcement come off did the stock market like the information well no it didn't because of what we saw in the forthcoming offerings uh, down the line when it was received in the market the stock didn't double uh, it was fallen on deaf ears. And then when it was identified that the Carno technology uh, was in the works for many, many years up to the announcement, it was kind of like, well, um, that would have been baked into the cake anyway. Uh, people would have known that that deal was in the in the works and the stock wouldn't have sold off so healthy without them knowing about that if it was such a large catalyst, okay? But when we talk about the 700 in, in, in range, I think it's one of those that we have to sit back and ask ourselves, what is it that we can realistically achieve in a day of driving? Um, I drive 500 miles. I'm tired. I'm not a truck driver. Uh, and this is my comfortable Toyota Tacoma that I drive over the road. My little six cylinder um, that uh, is easy to drive. It's comfortable to drive. The seats are comfortable. Um, th it's good to go. Uh, now, when we used to drive a Mustang, when we used to transfer around this country and we used to take that, we could hardly drive that thing 500. It was the most uncomfortable vehicle you could ever ride. And the last thing you want to do is wake up the next day after sleeping at a Motel 6 and hit the road again for another 500. My hats go off to the truck drivers, baby. You guys do this every single day, week in, week out. And some of you truck drivers have been doing it for decades. My hat goes off to you. So my rhetorical question for the, the, the truck driving community out there to help further along in this discussion is when and how and why would it ever benefit for a range outside of just reducing the number of fuelings that you need to be subject to in the truck? How is it that on a day-to-day -day basis, anything less than uh, 500 miles or anything more than 500 is really applicable in nature, right? So when Hylion came out and said the 780, I, I was imagining to myself, okay, 780, the, the question is, <clears throat> how much opportunity along expected routes can that 780 realize without having to proceed to the next route, uh, the next truck stop to refuel, okay? That's the question in my mind. How many less routes by achieving the 780 are we uh, not able to achieve by not gaining the 1,000 miles? Because if they're not going to provide any clarity, I can just assume that 780 is, is kind of along that, that, that maximum range. Now, I would expect that there was fuel in the tank, okay? I would expect that they could have got another 100 miles, maybe even 200 miles, okay, with what they had left. They did not declare that. They left it open-ended, and that's where some of the speculation on behalf of the investor community came in to say, good grief, I mean, wh what's going on here? Um, you know, wh what, are we, what are we looking to do, to do here, guys? I mean, we've been told over and over and over again that the Hypertruck ERX can achieve a 1,000 miles range, over a 1,000 mile range, every, over a 1,000, over. Well, you just came in significantly less on the very first over the road uh, test that was uh, put through social media, and you came in way under a thousand miles. Are they lying? Um, did they did they mean ill will? Did they mean it to be received that way? Here's the thing, guys. No matter what I think or presume, highly honest thinking, um, the fact of the matter in is the bottom line. They have got to be more careful with the information that they re that, that they release. Um, it is their responsibility to do this, okay? And I have been extremely, extremely hard on their PR department from the very beginning, from the very beginning. And I don't know if it's just based on the talent that they have or the learnings that they have not incorporated or the expectations that the, um, 
that the PR department has on the um, on the news when it's released and the reaction that is going to be expected. I just think that any logical individual would uh, come to the, the 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 bottom line that this release could have been done with a lot more care. Uh, and could have had a lot more color surrounding it. And that way it could have been positively received in the market because here we are, we're stuck on a Sunday release on the independent investor channel, trying to twist what was taken as a very, very negative piece of information and trying to spin it as positive, which I think the bottom line intent of that information was aimed at being positive, not negative. They were looking to say, look, 780, it blows out any of the competition on the marketplace. Look what we were able to do. Look what we were able to do with this much fuel remaining in the tank. The idea is that we were able to run that generator for 780 miles. Naria a problem? Smooth? All the things that the driver said during that experience were actually missed. If you actually listened to the words um, that that kind uh, driver was making from Hylion, he was actually talking about how awesome it is with the experience. Now he's comparing old experience uh, that, that he's had in over the road trucking to this new experience that he's been able to help uh, in pushing the dialogue forward with Hylion. But I, I think when we're talking about some of those me metrics that probably uh, don't matter as much, I think that 780 is one that is um, variable. Uh, and I think we really need to understand it as a baseline. Uh, is that the max? Is there areas of improvement that can be made? Um, how does payload affect this? And this was a big question that came out when the news dropped. Well, why didn't you just put an 80,000 payload behind it? And I got to thinking, you know, on a, deck, a direct drive ICE engine, wouldn't it uh, stand to affect the fuel consumption more uh, with a direct drive diesel as opposed to a fuel that fuels a generating unit on a constant basis? There's no load put on the generator, okay? For, for you mechanics out there, all right, its sole purpose is to charge the batteries, okay? The E-axle through the regenerative braking should actually provide smarter power to be able to accommodate that payload. And my scary question rhetorically to the grander audience here is, is payload going to be affected that much, Right? Are we going to lose so much fuel efficiency off the top just because we have payload in an electrical drive train application? It doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to me because there's no demand over the generator that's garnered from having $80,000 uh, attached to your, 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 your truck or just driving the truck itself. There's no additional demand that's asked of the generator, right? Um, does it kick on more to charge the battery because the draw of the e-axles is more? Perhaps. But these are some of the things that we want to understand going forward. And quite frankly, on a cross uh, comparison between the diesel uh, hauling 80,000 truck, uh, 80,000 pounds, and the Hypertruck ERX hauling 80,000 pounds over the road side by side is the comparison that I want to see to perhaps maybe draw the correlation between the Hypertruck ERX actually being more efficient when it does haul cargo, it does haul freight over the road than does a diesel because of the connection between the demand over the mechanical energy on the diesel side, as opposed to the electrical demand over just the batteries in the Hypertruck ERX. So, News that we'll have to wait for, I think here being in the ice age of the company, the stock price is respect, recessed uh, to a point where it gets zero attention whatsoever uh, in the marketplace. So as we look to shore up that announcement of the 780 that was released this week, I would encourage each and every one of you guys to draw your own conclusions about that, what, what that could potentially mean. I think as I've had more time to think about it, I'm, I'm of the understanding that 780 is pretty impressive. Uh, it's pretty impressive. And if you're looking to just compare uh, over a thousand miles and you're looking to look at 780 as less than that, I think is an unfair comparison because there's too many unknowns in what Hylion intended to do by the release of that information. 
And, and, and I don't think the intention was to compare and say, look, we initially said a thousand and now we mean 780. I do not think that that was their intention. I don't guys. I, I don't even think it was close. I think drawing that distinction between those two numbers is actually significantly unfair. But I think the lack of anticipation of how that information would have been received in the grander investor uh, community, I do chalk up as a delta for the company. Uh, and I think that they can do better going forward in the release of their information. I absolutely do. So um, hopefully you guys see it that way. Um, we will continue to, to march along. I mean, look, had Hylion come out and said, hey, we were able to get a maximum range of 320 miles, uh, I would have been a lot more a uh, lot, a lot more crazy. I probably would have sold my shares on Monday because where I think these small missteps uh, are going to happen, where I think these small mistakes in release of PR or maybe potential to do it one way or the other uh, are to be expected with a new company. And there's a long leash and, and a long uh, bit of latitude that I can uh, lend to the company. Um, we are just getting kind of tired of highly on being perceived as offering information in one light and then releasing information on another light. And for them not to anticipate that um, was a little bit careless. I think it was a little bit reckless, especially for a company that's this close to the vest. They should be proud of their product. And if their product got 780 and they look at it like I'm looking at it now, why wouldn't they look to exploit the positivity in that release as opposed to allow the grander investor um, uh, community to speculate on the information when it was relieved. I think it could have been done in a little bit more, a uh, little bit more care uh, before it was. And I'd like to see that going forward. Uh, the second announcement that we got was the 7% on the hybrid unit. Um, now this was, this was a diesel hybrid. Uh, for you guys that don't know, uh, Hylion has two uh, specific hybrid EX products. Um, the one hybrid EX product is aimed to supplement the lack of horsepower that can be garnered from compressed natural gas. Uh, the other is actually meant for a diesel application. And for you guys that can just say, well, Ryan, you're stupid because diesel is a fossil fuel and we can't continue to use fossil fuel. Uh, I would encourage you to pull your head out of the sand okay, and wake up to the reality that diesel is not going away, okay, diesel is not going away, and no matter what side of the political spectrum you are on, that very reality is uh, made ever so present when there's any type of wrinkle or shakeup in the diesel market, okay, you want to tell me that diesel is not important, so we can accommodate or we can pull diesel from the marketplace to accommodate a bunch of uh, uh, people who just want to do away with fossil fuel because it's evil, all right? Um, I'm immersed in reality. And my friends, that is not gonna happen. So the hybrid EX diesel uh, application is meant to uh, consume less fuel. It is meant for fuel savings. It is aimed at fuel savings, okay? So when the 7% was released, it was a cartoon uh, of a, um, a hybrid truck going up a hill. Again, back to a common theme that if I was just going to offer my small echo chamber of opinion through social media, I think more care uh, and more due diligence is required in releasing that information. Because again, I think that what could have been uh, taken as positive news which is what Hylion intended. I don't think they meant to in, improve upon the 30% savings that's been declared throughout the past. I don't think they meant to release this information and say, no, no, we don't get 30, we get seven. I don't think that was the intent at all, my friends. The intent was to provide a cross comparison, a savings estimate for the hybrid EX product that is meant to supplement the diesel application and they save 7% on that diesel application in a nose to nose comparison. They never said that, okay? Assuming that that same diesel application with the exact same horsepower, with the exact same capability, with the exact same engine drives that exact same route 
using the exact same driver tendencies, using the exact same weather conditions, renders A, results on the diesel side alone, and B, results on the diesel side supplemented by the hybrid EX product. And the release of that information had us presuming way, way too much comparative. And what were the variables in the, the test condition? What were the variables? 7% savings against what? 7% savings based on the information. I just reviewed the tweet before I came online for you guys. You can read it however you want. Perhaps maybe even you read it different than me. Therein lies the problem, okay? Hylion has got to be more careful with information when they release it. And they have to be able to take these good data points, which this is good. 7% savings over diesel, over a hilly route for trucks and companies that run hilly applications. I'm from Oregon, okay? It was the test bed for one of three companies. And these trucks, as they're going over uh, the range from uh, Portland to, uh, to Tillamook to the coast, everybody knows that, that Tillamook forest, right? It's, it's crazy how hilly that range is. And they're making that, that run multiple times with their fleets. If you can put on a product that perhaps maybe you get a tax incentive from, and the total cost of ownership can be drawn upon by a metrics of 7% savings, guys, they're going to opt for that product. I believe that they would. I really would. It's a technological advancement. And compared to what the industry is garnering as other solutions, that's a fantastic cost savings over multiple units. Fleets are hungry for this type of information. And if they can draw down the high cost of diesel right now by putting the hybrid EX product into work, um, they can do that. Now, that's not to speak of the AP unit uh, and the savings that are garnered from there. Why? Because Hylion did not uh, offer that information. Okay. They did not offer the um, uh, um, how much of the terrain was hilly, how much of it was down. Uh, downhill, how much of it was uphill, how much of it was flat, how much of it was straight, but was it just climbing a hill and over a certain number of miles, and that was the test uh, parameters that were drawn upon by the test. Investors like myself and many others are hungry for this information, and when I sat back and I looked at the 7%, I said, okay, well, we have a product here that works. Mm -hmm. Works. Uh, does it work to a clip of 2%? cost savings? No. Does it work to a clip of 15% cost savings? No. Does it work to a clip of 5% savings? No. Does it work to a clip of 7% savings in the diesel application? The answer is yes. Now the question becomes, is this enticing enough for fleets to go through the hassle and dare I say the downtime that's necessary if they don't uh, install this off of the line brand new, um, the downtime that is incurred to save 7%. If a truck has one, two, three, four, five years left on its life cycle, when is the expected payback of taking what we know now in that if that truck is going to continue to be introduced in over the road and hilly terrain in its rigor, um, it, it is, is it expected that they can get that total cost of ownership uh, that payback over that unit and investment uh, in the useful life of the truck. Okay. That's what it means to me because the higher that number, the less time of the payback and the more older the truck can be to actually have the hybrid e actions installed with some uh, level of expectation that it gets that payback. Okay. Realized before the truck turns to dust, or they take it and they sell it off to another country, or they sell it off to another uh, another company. Okay, uh, and, and that that piece right there, with those two pieces of information coming out back to back, I, I don't know what their motivation was. It I can only speculate because Hylion does not provide any type of color on it, um, and I will continue to scrutinize this company up and down on their obligation to be much more careful with information. Um, if I had the opportunity to just have a beer with Thomas Healy and just, just look him in the eye and, and, and say, does this make sense to you? Like, I understand that it's got to be pretty. I understand that it's got to be professional looking. 
Okay. But the, but the, but the, but the nuts and bolts of the information, man, it's, it's terrible. It's terrible. And you can do so much better in each of those scenarios. They have to look at what, what it is they have in essence, and they have to look at the opportunity that they can spin the information with the narrative that they want investors to understand about that. And we're stuck in this limbo. Is, is it a makeup? Is it a revision from old declared information? Is it an admittance to getting less uh, efficient out of both of their applications? We don't know. We don't know because Hylion hasn't just come on and, and, and told us what it is they want us to understand about why they're releasing the information. Otherwise, why release the information? And I honestly believe, and I give Hylion a pass with regard to them just releasing the information with a little bit more of a careless type of, uh, uh, of a card on this than I, than I would have liked to have seen. And they just need to be more careful with releasing the information going forward. So that, that's it for the releases this week, guys. I, I was um, uh, happy to see the reprieve in the market. It was of interest to me to see, you know, the exacerbated downturn in the market drag Hylion down uh, and, then, then, and then the turnaround in the market and Hylion continued to go down. Um, so the futile and entertaining activity of watching the stock price day to day uh, has turned out uh, no growth for me. Uh, has turned out uh, very little uh, in way of hope. Uh, I was um, extremely, extremely set off by the two tweets uh, that I wanted to explain this week to you guys on the on the weekly highly on video. And, and I hope you got some value out of it. I, I hope you guys understand that when I when I speak about this next segment here in the weekly video, and we talk about the stock price, and we talk about what's what's to expect going forward. If you strip away, and I talked about this on my live stream, if you stripped away the $3 stock price, and you were only allowed to look at the information that is uh, publicly uh, dis disseminated, I think you would be crazy to suggest that this company is right now trading at $3 a share. I can make the arguments on both sides. I really can. Um, I could make the argument to value this company at a dollar a share. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they don't make any money. This company doesn't make any money. Two to three million this year, 2022. It's a wash, guys. It's a wash, okay? Um, I'm here to summarize it in a way to let you know, look, the chances of catching a jump in 2022 in the stock market, albeit low, is still there. Why don't you just sell the company now, Ryan? Why don't you just get out of it and wait until uh, the mood changes? It's because the stock market is a forward-looking mechanism. All right. And when we look at the stock price now, Hylion and the stock price and the, and the analysts that are looking at this are trying to value this company minimum six months out to 18 months out. And there's going to be a sweet spot where we enter into that projected scale up and ramp up of the company where the stock will start to move with no uh, notice. It's not going to knock on your door, my friends, and say, hey, now's the time. You had suggested to the independent investor channel that he should just liquidate all of his shares and until the, the candy man comes and knocks on the door and says, hey, it's, it's, it's time. It's time to go ahead and purchase your highly on shares right now uh, for the good of the order because it's starting to move. That doesn't exist in stock market investing, all right? So although I do believe that the potential in 2022 uh, to be fairly low for any type of catalyst, because we've already kind of capped where we can expect earnings to fall this year, uh, it's a wash. Um, as far as prior projections, um, they have missed badly. Um, whether or not they'll ever meet those uh, large projections. Uh, we need a lot more meat on the bone uh, with regard to their progress in how they are going to approach this mass scale plan. Um, they have drug shareholders through the mud. And I'm talking about for a number of the last two years, um, because they've just completely pushed this time frame forward 24 months. Uh, and in the stock market, 
uh, that's, that is an immense amount of time for competition to come on. It's an immense amount of opportunity for Cummins to grab some market share. Uh, it's an amazing amount of time for Nikola to continue to limp their product forward. Um, all the while, while Hylion seems to think that they can just take two years off. And that's two years off, two years off from progress toward mass scale up in that they need to value, eva evaluate and um, uh, uh, rigor test every single nut and bolt. Uh, and by nature of uh, Thomas Healy's um, admission that every wire nut needs to be um, uh, validated in winter testing to make sure that it doesn't uh, corrode or what type of undercoating is necessary in winter testing. Um, my question is, why wasn't that stuff done before? And, you know, the real holistic application that I put over highly on, I look at this it twofold. Um, I was duped as a, as a share owner based on the information that was put out initially and where we are now. Um, I never expected them to just push the timeline to the right. Um, I never expected us to be this anemic, this far into the game here. Guys, we are in 2022. Based on the projections that they had on the onset of where they would have been right now, they cannot say that the information that they had then was so valuable to suggest that if they stripped away the supply chain issues and Hylion was provided every part that they would have ever needed, that they would have ever had a, a, a pie in the sky's chance of meeting those numbers because they, they wouldn't. And this is where the credibility piece comes in. Okay. Do I believe this company is going to do great things? Yes. But I am investing on a significant amount more hope now in making some of those numbers material going down the line and whether or not they're going to be able to do that. And I think it is incumbent upon Hylion to recognize that now and understand that there is a sense of urgency, okay? I, I understand going on YouTube channels and providing an interview, okay? But me as a shareholder with thousands of dollars tied up in this company, that's not where I want to see your focus. Like, I don't care about that anymore. And I provide that myself included, as much as I feel like it would be a riveting interview to come on and support my request that I put in two years ago to have an interview, I don't want that anymore. Um, I, I, I think when there's interviews done by certain YouTube content creators and everything is, is being portrayed that it's, it's just hunky-dory and everything's great, it's not. Things are not good. Um, I, I chalk up your stock and your company era right now as the Ice Age. It's horrible, okay? And there's people out there that are going to completely disagree. Oh, the progress, this and that. Oh, this and that. And if Hylion would have come out and said, we only get 320 by the range, the thousand was wrong, they would spin that in a positive way. Whereas me personally, I would have exited my position and we would have never seen another Hylion video on the Independent Investor Channel again. Mark my word, I would have been out, done. Because this company is coming dangerously close to making projections that they cannot follow through with. Do I think that they intend on doing that? I don't. I don't. Do, they, do I think that the original investor presentation was put out there with the intention to mislead? I don't. I really don't. And, and I could be dead wrong on that. Um, did I put uh, undue reliance on that information? Yep. Was it disclaimed that I shouldn't do that? Yes. Uh, so it's me to blame. And, and therefore, Hylion has no obligation whatsoever to defend my decisions because um, I should have been writing, reading the fine print rather than the information that was in bold uh, color right in front of us, right? Okay. But because that information was put out, don't you think that Hylion would have a little bit more of a sense of urgency to get down to brass tacks? What is important? Is going on what the truck the best thing for Hylion right now? I, I don't know. I don't know. It's good for them. Um, is going on other YouTube channels um, what Hylion needs to be doing right now? Do you honestly think that the visibility you get from a, 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 a YouTube channel is that great that you need to spend 30 minutes out of your day to come on and oblige that request every other, every other quarter, it seems like? You know, every quarter, twice a quarter, we're coming onto YouTube and we're talking about the company and we're regurgitating the same information. Go into silent, okay? 
give some impression to say, you know what, I'm going behind the curtain, my friends, I'll emerge with a plan, a detailed plan on how we're going to scale up this company, because I know that we can, I know that we said we were going to, and I know that we can, and here's what we're going to do. Going on social media uh, opportunities does nothing for me. It pisses me off, actually. It pisses me off because it seems like the company has no sense of urgency whatsoever to get to work, to, to at least provide some level of roadmap on where we could potentially go. Why not provide a roadmap after this whole like two and a half year validation uh, of a company that we thought when it came uh, public via SPAC was further along the process and actually had a product. They didn't, they didn't, they had a really good idea. And they had a truck that was painted green and white that could spin cookies in the, in the, 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 um, the parking lot of the Hylion headquarters in Austin. Okay. That's all they had. That's what we invested in my friends and whether or not we can take that original concept to something special into the future uh, in Thomas, we trust that's, that's what we're on right now. And stock investing requires a lot. This investment opportunity requires us to be extremely naive. Uh, it uh, requires us to accept every piece of information as good information and not scrutinize any of it, uh, to provide an unlimited leash to Hylion to do what it is that they want to do until they run out of money and then ask for more, which they will, uh, to expect that that looming share float that is locked up right now uh, will be released uh, uh, with an, uh, um, an opportunity to provide a longer time frame and push the mass commercialization to the right again. These are all things that I expect to happen uh, because I don't expect anything in way of, uh, Thomas said that the, everything on the timeline on the last quarter was on track. My friend, I don't believe you. Uh, I just don't believe you anymore. Uh, until you can start to prove that you can hold to a specific time frame until you can prove that you can actually do which, what it is that you said that you were going to do. Um, I don't believe you. Uh, and the urgency behind this company actually providing some results right now um, is, is never more apparent than it's ever been. And we wonder why the stock is at $3 a share. This is why. And if they're not careful, they're going to continue to slip in their share price. And those shareholders like myself and many, many others who believe in this company will continue to make excuses, <laughs> to justify why and how, to justify that it's okay, to justify that there is no charge in Hylion to have any type of sense of urgency with regard to the current situation, uh, to not try to provide some clarity to shareholders, instead keep them in the dark in understanding that what's going on behind the curtains is all well and good and plenty. And we're going to be talking about a company five years down the line that is actually going to survive to drag shareholders through this opportunity on complete faith and trust in the management without being provided any type of color around tangible opportunity toward marching toward a tangible end. How is this company expected to, to earn profitability? Let me ask you that. Have you thought about it? What type of numbers then is, does it need to garner to cover the cost of operations to turn a profit? My friends, with the information that we know right now, and I hope I'm wrong, with the information that has been declared to shareholders over the last two and eight, two and a half years, right now, right now, my assessment on profitability is a pipe dream. It's a pipe dream. That's given the information, everything that I've extrapolated and put into the depths of my mind in churning out um, the path to profitability, it is a pipe dream. Why? Because we have not been, been provided any type of clarity on how that's going to happen. The existing reservations are being called into question as to the merits of those. Um, the uh, orders that are even backed by deposits, why not just surrender? Let's just say it's $10,000 per order. Why would they continue to honor that if there's another product that is allowed to creep onto the marketplace that's better? Why would they opt for renewable natural gas hypertruck ERX if they know that the Carno is coming in two years? Why wouldn't they just keep their deposit, swap it to the Carno? Now, I don't want the renewable. I like the idea of the Carno, but I don't like the re idea of renewables. How is that going to affect the bottom line? Has Have they uh, 
created some internal cannibalism going on with this Carno generator technology? We don't know. Because according to Thomas Healy, there's extreme demand over their products, okay? But that is not indicative of the order uh, orders that are anemic at best. I mean, what's the next announcement? Are we going to announce uh, at Christmas that we have 10 more orders? I don't care at this point. And none of it matters. Orders of 10 are futile. They can log a 10 order uh, um, order every single month, and it doesn't matter. The stock price is not going to move, okay? And there's a reason for that. The reason why that is, is because even with those 10, fleets are given the optionality to opt out of those orders in search of a better technology and a better product. If they are not forced into that technology, they will not exercise their right to buy, my friends. They will not. And we're talking about a token order of 10. That's $100,000 just in deposit revenue. That's nothing. That's nothing. That pays 20% of Thomas Healy's uh, annual salary. So when you put it into context that way, we are in the ice age right now with this company and we are operating on hope, right? I am over the next 15 months, just like I said many, many months ago, putting this company on a bridge. It is a bridge. And I suggested many, many months ago that walking that bridge with all of the alligators down below, this is like Indiana Jones, would not be easy. And my friends, it is not going to be easy. And I think it may get worse before it gets better. Because right now, my friends, we are grasping onto the very hopes that Thomas Healy and the very investors, both institutional and retail investors alike, end up realizing in some capacity, some level of light to understand that we could potentially be looking at a scale up in production numbers with the plan that they've laid out. Okay. Hylion is not an OEM. It is critical for them to maintain the OEM relationships. Uh, will Peter Bilt just sever the relationship with Hylion? I don't know. Anything is possible at this point. Uh, I put nothing past this company. They do not double down on the relationship with Peter Bilt enough to give me assurance to know that they're going to be there in the future. They have not. Uh, I have learned to be a cynic with this company. Um, am I proud to be a shareholder in the company? Yes. Am I proud to be uh, associated with all of the deltas that are going on with this company? No, not at all. Not at all. They could do significantly better. And my problem is I think they are naive to this fact. I believe that everything that they're doing, I believe that they believe that everything that they are doing is on par and they are doing everything that they need to do. And that uh, by doing what it is that they need to do, they will eventually end up where it is that they have a vision to end up in. And I challenge that notion. I do. I think complacency has no place in business whatsoever. And the perception of complacency right now in the ice age with Hylion Holdings, I wish I could be more positive week over week, but I promised my community and my shareholder base that I would come on and I would share what I feel like is the pulse of the company. What is the pulse of the community? And not everybody out there are naive shareholders, okay? They are just shareholders. And some of those shareholders are downright pissed right now at what's going on. Give us some color. Give us some transparency. Give us some idea that over the next year in 2023, we are not just going to allow fleets to just drive these trucks and test and validate and come out with winter testing and CARB and NHTSA certification. Give us some color on what that's going to mean. Otherwise, you are going to have the nicest, most certified, most verified arts and crafts engineering project in the history of the stock market that nobody in the mass scale and the trucking industry wants to put into rigor. That's currently where we are. When we watch this video some many years from now, we will understand what the very tone and tenor of this company is right now latter part, 2022, moving into what is supposed to be a transitional year, 2023. I'm looking at fall of 2023 as really being that catalyst and looking from the time from now until then to be that forward looking bracket of time, six to 12 months out where the stock starts to move and it'll start to move quickly and it'll start to move with aggressiveness. 
And mind you guys, it will appear as if it's moving for no reason whatsoever. I really appreciate you tuning in to this pulse of where we are here in September of 2022 for this weekly update on Hylion. You could tell I was somewhat passionate about this message. I do apologize if there were people who were offended on my Twitter tweets this week, but to say one thing and then deliver on another uh, in all intents and purposes can be construed uh, to be misleading, my friends. And we need to avoid that at all costs. And we avoid that through communication. And I think it's key that we continue to double down on providing transparency on this opportunity. I would invite you to subscribe to the channel. If you're new, you continue to want to catch these updates from week over week. I typically do not miss. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video. Hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. If not, hit the thumbs down button. No problem. If you don't like me, no problem. Uh, get lost. Uh, no love lost. Don't let the door hit you on the ass on the way out. I have no problem with that. No fritz, no frills, no glitz, no glamour. Okay, that is my approach. There's no elevator music in the background, but this is absolutely how I feel about what's going on right now as a bullish shareholder in this company. And I'm looking to kind of capture that and provide some level of foresight, some sort of roadmap for investors that hold this company and look to uh, enjoy better days into the future as Hylion looks to bring a lot of these initiatives together on their march toward electrifying the class eight space in class eight trucking. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future.